Hello everyone, welcome to Tactica Imperialis and to today's video. Today marks the dawn of a new era and I'm not talking about the Dawnbringer Crusades. This is going to be the first of our hobby stream video series. This is something I talked about in my channel update around about a month ago that I wanted to do and I finally got around to starting it. We did a poll, uh, which some of you voted in, and we settled on painting Gazkul Thraka. So in this series, uh, which is going to be the stream VODs edited down, at least to start with, because that's what the comments suggested, we are going to be working on the 8th edition model for Gazkul Thraka as a sort of celebration of the new Orc Codex, which came out last week, this week, something like that. Uh, when the Orc Codex came out. Now, at the moment, the model is in sub-assemblies. Don't mind all the extra bits and bobs that you can see on this face count. It's going to disappear. I'm going to switch over to this camera here, which is looking down at everything, so that you can see what we're going to be working on. Now, in this episode, we're going to talk through uh, some of the paint scheme ideas that I've got. I've got a couple of people in my chat with me who are going to help as well. And you guys in the comments can get involved too. So if you have any requests or suggestions for how we can work through this paint scheme together, then I am more than happy to hear it. With that all said though, I think I've stalled long enough. Let's switch over and let's get started. So I've put the model into six sub-assemblies to start with. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So they are Gaskell's main body itself. You've got the head, the torso, the legs, and also the horns. Uh, but not any of the back detail. This is just how it comes when you build it. I've kept the power pack uh, slash engine, I guess we'll call it an engine, uh, for the mega armor separate because when you put it on Gazgul's back, it, uh, it blocks a bit, particularly up top. It starts to get a bit hard to access all the details on both pieces. I've also left the two arms separate. So we've got... Um, the Mega Shooter, uh, I think it used to be a big shooter, it's now even better. I think it's Mork's Raw, I think they call it, uh, which I've got here as one piece. I've left it without the smoke coming out of it, personal preference. Uh, we've got the Power Claw, which is absolutely mahoosive, and I'm really looking forward to painting that. I've also left the Iron Gob off, because if you put it on, and it does stay even without glue, it makes painting Gazkul's face and all the detailing just that bit more awkward and I didn't want to make my life more awkward so I've decided not to do that. So I've left that piece off and finally we have the base. Now I've decided because I think it looks better to have Gazkul in the assault pose rather than in the shooting pose where he's shooting off uh, to the left hand side. I've decided I want him in the assault pose where he is leaning forwards and the shooter is off to one side. It's all just where you put his feet. Uh, the rest of it makes absolutely no difference, but that won't come up for a while. I'm just letting you know in advance, I've made that decision, that's my decision, and that's final. So the first thing of importance is Gaskell is going to be painted in Evil Suns colours. That's non-negotiable. Because my army has always been Evil Suns since day dot. Uh, all the way back in before even the 2010s, it has always been Evil Sons. Uh, so this will be red, armoured, green skin. That is happening. That is non-negotiable. And I'm sorry. However, the exact composition of the red that we're going to use, I'm sort of open to interpretation. Because my orcs normally start pretty dark. Uh, my typical base paint is corn red. I'm just going to show that to my chat as well. Is corn red, which is one of the darkest reds that GW use as a base paint uh, because most of my armies by hook or by crook end up having quite dark paint schemes whether that's my Eidneth Deacon and Lumineth Realm Lords with their deep blue armour, my Demons of Slanesh have a really deep purple uh, and my Orcs often start from a base coat of Caliban Green uh, for their flesh which is another really dark base paint. I don't know why that is, it just is the general way I do things. But, for this, given it's, well, Gazkul, I kind of feel like I might want to go a bit brighter. 
So my initial thought and where I'm tempted to start is with Mephiston Red. I'm not doing the armor today. Uh, the plan is I'll do the armor in the next sort of streaming session once the, you guys in the comments and in my chat have had a chance to have a say. Uh, but initial thought is it will be Mephiston Red as a base, but I also have Wazdaka Red, I have Evil Sun Scarlet, I have Wild Rider Red, which is going to be probably my top highlight. I have a lot of reds and a bunch of oranges as well that we can use to do Gazkul's armor in different shades of red. I am open to suggestions. Please let me know down in the comments. I will be starting Gazkul's skin today, and I am going to start that from Caliban Green, because as much as Gazkul is a different breed of orc to most of the others, and he is now a super orc, I feel like I want to still tie it in with the rest of my orc army, and for that, I need that dark layer to begin with. That's not to say I'm going to follow that all the way up. I would normally go then up to uh, what used to be called Narlock Green. I think it's called Elysian Green now. But I've bought very recently two more recent paints, Vulcan Green and Warboss Green. So I am absolutely willing to add a few more layers to Gazkul Skin or even go in a different tonal direction to the rest of my Orcs just starting from that same base coat and then building up the layers just to give a little bit of tie together, you know, just find a few of the ideas I've got for all my orc army together and my chat tells me to paint the armor pink. No, I am not painting it pink. I have got pinks that I use on my demons, but I'm not painting it pink. Sorry, overruled chat. Now, I'm about to commit the greatest heresy in all of painting. Duncan Rhodes, if he ever decides to watch this, is going to not be very thrilled with me. For two reasons. One, I don't thin my paints. Um, I don't thin my paints. I have never bothered thinning my paints because, well, it's just kind of unnecessary to my mind, especially with base paints. Like, it's just adding an extra step to the process. I never have, and I probably never will, unless I decide to really put more time than I have into this. Second, I don't undercoat. I know, I know there are purist hobbyists going down and going, oh, Tactica, you need to start again, you didn't put an undercoat on. But bear with me here. Again, the base paints are so good that there is no need. Like, if the base paints were really thin and runny, then yeah, I'd probably undercoat. And there are certain tones, like pale elven flesh, like I've done on my daughters, my eye, neth, my lumineth, etc., where I do undercoat in white. But for things that require a black undercoat, or things that require just an undercoat for the sake of an undercoat, which is whether white or black, I just don't see the point. Like, the paint's thick enough, it will stick. And so, I don't undercoat. If you've already clicked off, I'm sorry. But I don't. You might be able to see already, we've hit a small snag. I apologize for some of the camera quality. I need to manually focus whenever I do something. So, if we look at Gazkul's face, you can see that on top you have the adamantium skeleton. But it's not entirely clear when you're painting it where the adamantium skeleton oh sorry the adamantium skull not skeleton the adamantium skull begins and the skin ends now to help me with that i'm gonna get the box that gazgul came in and i'm gonna use that to help me so i'm just having a look at the box and i can see from looking at it very quickly that from the Eye line upwards is going to be metallic, and I'm going to follow that to the letter. So you can see with what I've done, I've left that bit up to the eye. Uh, I've done the eye itself over in green. I'll tidy that up when I paint the eye later. And I will go across to here where there's a little ridge. And then from there, that will be silver. That will be the adamantium skeleton. Skull. Sorry, I've, I've played a bit too much Fallout. Adamantium skeleton is ingrained in my brain. Given this looks like flesh, and you can't really get a good look at the Gazcore model from behind uh, on the box, 
very much in shadow. I'm gonna paint it green and sort of say the arm is a little bit more ragtag uh, because when the arm goes on, for example, there's the shooter arm. When the shooter arm goes on, it looks to me like that's flesh and then plating and then back into flesh again. So I am gonna paint that as flesh. Um, just say that Gaskell didn't bother putting clothes over that bit. Honestly, now that I've just done that, I think I might've put the green on the wrong bit. Uh, Cause again, let's put the gun on. Again, that bit being green makes less sense given you've got this bit off to one side. That bit being flesh and then just transitioning into lower layered armor. I think I've done that wrong. Uh, so note for future Tactica in the next stream, tidy that up uh, with your cloth color, whatever we decide that to be. So we'll do that. And that's the main body done. Now we go on to the arms. And again, given again, Gazgul's an orc, and even the orcs in mega armor, there's a surprisingly small amount of green. I know mega armor does cover a lot of it. And there's arguably more exposed flesh here than on the mega knobs. Uh, or it's a very similar amount of exposed flesh to mega knobs. But it really feels like you should be painting more green since, you know, it, it's the boss of the orcs. I don't know, maybe I'm just waffling because I, I, have, I have a really nice technique for painting green and I don't get to do it enough on this model. So maybe I'm just being a bit sad. Again, you can see, because I've left this shoulder pad on, getting at some of the detail is proving a little irksome. It's nothing I can't handle. But this is the one problem, so, well, it's, there's a few problems with modern GW miniatures, but because they're so detailed, especially nowadays, if you're trying to really make sure you hit all the details, it's very easy to miss them. Now, this is a problem they've had for years. I look at my old battle wagon and I look at it and I think, oh my god, how did I miss all those details? So it's not a a modern phenomena of models being hard to paint because they're finicky. It's just something I've really realized is that GW really wants you to paint, build, is, is assemble, paint and play. But if you're A, an inexperienced painter or B, a new hobbyist and you, or someone who cares more about gaming than you do hobby, but you still let your army to look good, then it's very easy to, you know, start a project, build the models because you want them on the tabletop and you have to build them complete because they don't go together any other way. You can't just blue tack bits on and hope for the best. And suddenly you can't paint half the details. Like, I imagine there's many an old Space Marine player who really got annoyed of building their tactical marines and then being unable to reach the Aquila because they glued the bolters on early on. My initial thought is uh, null oil wash onto the Caliban green, get it really, really dark, then build up a, a heavy layer of Caliban green, a pretty heavy layer of Vulcan green, which is slightly brighter, and then work our way up to Warboss green, which is this tone right here. I am unsure as to whether we need to go through Elysian Green. Uh, but Elysian Green can be used in combination with Warboss Green. I'll just need to dig it out and check. But I've also bought Cyberite Green, which is a bit more of that eerie green, that sort of eerie blue green that you get, uh, which I could use as an edge highlight and take it down a different route entirely to show that Gazgul's not like all there like he used to be. But he's all there mentally but physically his body's warped and it's not really the same as it used to be so that's another option and i'm kind of leaving this up to chat i think rather than normal because normal can leave things looking a bit messy i'm going to use coelia green shade as my wash because it is dark it's still a dark paint um relative to things it's not as bad as normal oil but it is still pretty dark so i sort of was faced with two options if i take away the base in the wash of go down starting from Vulcan green either go down cyberite green which has got this uh, bluish tint and create sort of a not ethereal that'd be the wrong word but sort of a, a much more weird shade uh, I suppose <sighs> weird's the wrong word as well I can't think of a good tone for it I think ethereal is the best I've got for Gaskell or go down the other route 
where we build up the layers from Vulcan green up to Warboss green with Elysian green as a top edge highlight. I'm leaning towards going this way on the Elysian green side and going for a warmer tone because red armor generally it's quite a warm color palette using um, reds and oranges. It's generally going to be warm by default. So a warmer tone going this way. But for contrast, and especially considering we're using so many metallics, a lot of which often do leave a cold tone to metallics, having cold flesh and then trying to make the red a bit less warm and vibrant at the end as well, which is something we can discuss in the comments, um, is something I can consider too. So I'm still not fully decided. I'm working toward the Elysian green edge highlight rather than Cyberite, but I'm not taking Cyberite off the table. So what we're going to do is we're going to re-layer up the Caliban green that we used earlier. This just allows me to build back up the base coat that's been washed over. It allows me to cover over any details and really let the crevices that I wash be crevices, but really dark crevices. And again, we're being quite liberal with the layer, but leaving some gaps. And we'll keep building up over those layers. I'm not the type... Uh, I decided to build up and build up and build up on more and more raised details, like sort of working up to edge highlighting. That's my typical method. Edge highlighting is my sort of bread and butter. But around the face, you can generally afford to be a little bit brighter because you want to draw the eye into the face. So I'm going to be a bit more liberal than I might have otherwise been. And I'm going to do the underside of the chin too. So now that the Caliban green layer up has dried, we're going to go on and we're going to do our first proper highlight. Not to say that that didn't matter, that Caliban green coat that we just did, because it undoubtedly did matter. But now it's something that you'll be much more visibly able to see, hopefully, and that's going to be our Vulcan green, which we are going to use. Now, that we've built up there the second layer of highlight onto the skin. Now the next layer we're going to do is going to be the war boss green. And I fully intend that to be the second to last and the, the, the last main highlight before we need to make a decision on Cyberite versus Elysian green as our final top edge highlight. I'm, I'm still really torn and Chat and I are still not entirely settled. Right, so next up on the agenda is Warboss Green. I think we finally come to a consensus with chat that Elysian Green is the way we're going to go. So Cyberite Green, get out of here. Bye. So now we're really getting picky about which surfaces we want to highlight. And again, the face is the best example of this. So now we're really just getting the really properly raised areas. And this really adds a brighter edge to Gaskell. You can now really start to see the brighter tones. So now as we go on to the arms, start to see that all that building up we've done with the Vulcan Green starts to pay off gangbusters. As now we can really hit these raised areas with a bit more accuracy. Rather than doing it from scratch, we can really start to just hit the tops this method also often leaves quite a coarse look. It often leaves it looking a bit more coarse than some of the more fine highlighting techniques that you've seen. It looks quite rough and ready, which I quite like. I quite like the rough and ready style. It doesn't work for everybody, but I do in terms of it looks, it doesn't look grainy, but it kind of has that effect of a slight bit of like almost grain. So now, if we look again, there's Gazgul's face, nicely built up. The arms, again, there's some build up to the layers, but it's nothing crazy. It just, it shows where we've come from, but also where we've gone. And it's nicely built up. I've probably done more on the power claw than I have on the gun arm. But now comes the acid test and how good I am, or not, as the case may be. Elysian Green. Now, this is normally my default highlight paint for my orcs. So I just put Elysian Green on, as like I did the um, Vulcan Green earlier, and leave it at that. This is going to be used as an edge highlight. So we're only going to highlight a few things. 
on the arms, I genuinely don't think I'm going to use it aside from to edge highlight a couple of points. I'm going to be have to trust myself to be really sparing. When I do edge highlighting, my biggest issue when I edge highlight is I end up doing too much and that completely ruins the effect. So I'm going to have to be really patient, really careful and really restrained in order to do this correctly. Easiest one to get is the line down the inside of the mouth. You can hit that pretty easily. It's a nice edge surface. Same thing can be done along the cheek, next to the chin. This bit I found more awkward to paint today because of the angle of the camera. I found this, and probably my left-handedness, I found this a bit more difficult to paint this side today. And that's it. No more. We're going to stop there. That's all the Elysian Green. We're just going to add just to make sure that that's there. Right, definitively, we're done. That's all the Elysian Green we're going to add. It's just pop the detail a touch more and raised up a few more edges. And crucially, I've not put any on the neck. And I'm not going to because, again, I want to draw the eye into Gazgul's face. Which is why I've really focused on the Elysian Green along the nose, the eye, and the chin to pull the eye centrally onto the model. That's the purpose of that. And so we find ourselves at the point where we have completed the skin. Now, that's not to say that all the skinny bits are done. We've obviously got teeth, we've got the tongue, we've got the eye. We've got all of these bits on the face and the stitches as well. Can't forget the stitches that we need to build up. However, I think as a starting point, we've hit the main things. I'm going to do the teeth uh, in this part of the stream. And I think I might try and do the tongue as well, which I often do purple. Just a simple one, two, done purple. And the teeth I will do, obviously, the sort of a bonish color for the sort of yellowed enamel. And then that will be the stream. The eye, I'm just going to leave and paint that right at the end. Right at the end, I'm going to paint that. I'm going to stay with a small layer brush in order to paint this and I'm going to do it very simply. In fact, using a technique I just discovered that I actually really like. And that's going to be using Flayed One Flesh and Seraphim Sepia. One of the biggest pains is always getting around the back of teeth. Because, you know, the heads are designed that they're 3D, but you've got to get inside to paint the back of the teeth. That's always a pain. You can see I'm sort of painting round the teeth a little bit to try and catch the back of them because I can't just stick the brush in and hope I'll miss and then I'll hit something I really don't want to. While that dries, I am just very quickly, and I'm really not going to spend much time on this, going to stick a little bit of Nagaroth Knight onto the tongue. I can get away with hitting the Flay One Flesh because that's just a base coat. I can go back over that. I can forgive myself if I do that. If I hit the green, that's a different problem and one that I really want to avoid. I know it's not perfect because it kind of looks like I've just given him purple lipstick. So I may blend that back down, use some green and blend that back down once I've... Uh, Finished. I may go back over with like a watered down or just edge some of these in green just to tidy that up. Okay, there we go. So that's just tidied up the play one flesh look, and that's really helped already. Just tidying that up has really helped with the lipstick look because it's much more neat. Don't worry about this gap, by the way. That's where the iron gob goes. So with all that said, I think we are pretty much at um, at the end of where I wanted to get to tonight. So, in summary, we have settled on and painted the flesh of Gazgul Magorug Thraka. That is a win. So when you put the parts together, the power claw goes on like that, and the shooter goes on like that. It doesn't look like all that much. You can just see bits of colour on the model, and it'll stand sort of like that later. Rather than that, it's that. So it looks... So far, so simple. There's a bit of grit. Well, actually, it wasn't simple, but so far, so good. 
We've got a bit of green on there. We've got a few more bits of detail we could have done, like these teeth and these skulls with the same color as gas skulls, but we've decided to leave them alone for now. Now, for the next stream, this is where you come in, comments. I would like us to discuss the armor. Now, I've already told you, the armor is going to be red. No ifs, buts, or coconuts. I play Evil Sons. This is my model. It's going to be red. But, exactly what tone that red takes, I am leaving a little bit up to you guys to discuss. So, my current thought process is to go either with Corn Red or Mephiston Red as the base coat. So, darker red or a slightly lighter base red, and then work up from there. I've got five different reds we can use, um, these two plus three more, plus I have oranges and I'm actually really expanding my range of oranges uh, to try and just give us as many options as possible. So let me know in the comments your thoughts. Do you want to go for a really dark red base and build up like we have with the flesh tonight? Um, or would you rather start from a slightly lighter base and thus go for a much warmer brighter tone for the red armor i'm quite happy to go in either direction and follow you guys lead so let me know in the comments i'll discuss it with chat in the next stream uh, which will be happening in my discord server uh, so if you wish to uh, get involved with that look out in certain places and you may find an access link um, and all of the stuff as i explained in the video at the time with all that said though thank you very very much for joining me i do hope you have enjoyed this despite the uh new format it's, it's all new for me it's probably not my best piece of editing but i do hope you've enjoyed this nonetheless i certainly have uh, minus losing it at my spare camera because it was not working for my chat something to investigate before the next stream i'm not sure exactly when the next stream will be it'll probably be in a couple of weeks um so i'll do podcast this one week stream the other um so it'll probably be about two weeks time we can expect the next video plenty of time for us to have that discussion about the armor go back and forth i will be checking the comments and giving them a read as well. Thank you very much for watching. This has been Tactica Imperialis, and I will see you all next time. Bye for now.